G'day folks. Well, since I'm going to be clearing out my uh, spare room and turning it into a bedroom, I figured I'd do a little bit of a video on the house. I generally don't bother, but yeah, I mean, I'll start out here, which is just your standard laundry, good old fashioned washing machine, no modern crap, and main kitchen and walk through. Not much really to it, it's an old 60s, 70s era house that's been renovated. As you can see, bit of a mess. Nothing too special, I'm just moving stuff around and getting the old uh, Minolta photocopier out. You can see at the end of the hall. Microwaves, 1.2 kilowatt and 1 kilowatt Panasonic inverter. So far it's been pretty good. It's actually a good microwave, that one. Uh, yeah, so I'll get this outside and do a full autopsy on it later on. But for now I just want to get that machine lightened up enough that I can carry it outside with another person. Uh, it was a difficult two-man carry to get it in there after taking all the internals and stuff out of it. But I'm going to strip, lighten it up and even uh, separate the bottom three drawers from the top and we'll uh, remove it that way in two pieces. Okay, we've got shower room and toilet and uh, spare room which just houses various junk in my uh, clothes drawers, filing cabinet, that sort of thing. Not much in here. I don't have an awful lot of stuff in the house as such. It's mainly just electronics. I don't keep anything else in here. Uh, this is what I'm going to be getting rid of. It's a high mile machine. It does work, but it's just dusting the pages with toner before they get to the fuser. And you end up with just black smudges all over them. That and the fuser is pretty sad. The, op the photoconductive drum is pretty sad. It just needs a lot of money spent on it and I can't really justify it. I've got a good monochrome analogue to deal with anyway. It's a shame because it does work, but it doesn't matter. Nice green CCFL in these too. They're a very neat little light. Got imaging units from my colour Minolta CF2001. Various other bits and pieces. I believe that's a reel to reel player that my dad brought home one day. I haven't even taken it out of the wrap. That's what one thing we'll do this week is get that out of there and have a look at it. Various other bits and pieces. I've got a Sony 8mm or yeah, 8mm video monitor, oscilloscope tube from an engine analyzer, and just spare parts for the photocopiers. Uh, there's a fusing unit for the CF and a fusing unit for the uh, EP4000, which is that one. So, so that one's staying. That's a good runner. It's just the digital ones pretty much piked it every thousand pages or so. It just does something silly and dies, it breaks. But yeah, it's not a bad unit, it's got the RADF on it and photo uh, stapler finisher and that sort of thing, hole punch unit. Won't let me, uh... It takes ages to warm these things up, but it does run. Uh, lounge room, again, nothing special. Dad's still living here from Queensland, so he's got his computer and stuff set up here and sorting clothes and things out, but that's basically it. The old 42 inch Hitachi plasma is still doing very well. Uh, it's getting a bit sadder. Uh, I think Dad's got a habit of leaving it the um, DVD player on the menu screen as he plays uh, audio CDs. And the result is a bit of screen burn now of the DVD logo. So when that plasma gets too bad, uh, it can just go in the bin. Or actually, probably get the same treatment as the last one microwave transformer. Yeah, and that's just a blank shot, and that's what it's doing. It's leaving toner everywhere. Everything inside the um, paper conveyor and everything's just covered in it. But the unit's got basically got to be stripped, cleaned, uh, cause of the problem corrected, like a whole new imaging and toner unit, transfer unit. And then um, it might be worth using again, but I don't know how many pages this has on its counter. It'd be a few. Uh, what is it? 673,000. So it's a bit... Uh, I have seen these with a lot higher, but I'm guessing they're kept better well kept than this was. This came from Darwin. Uh, I was in a government office up there. They use them as a main workhorse because they're a pretty solid machine. That one there... I don't know what that stick is for. It's for another agent. 
But yeah, this whole conveyor down here that we'll get into later, that's covered in toner. And the, I've changed the imaging unit twice, but it still does it, so... It's either that or there's a backlog in the uh, toner waste dump. It's not dumping waste. Uh, that, that is a possibility, but there are uh, other problems with this unit, which mean I uh, don't have the time or the money for it. It's a shame, because it does good, good size uh, prints. That's just storage. You know, tons of paper. Like, this is all paper I pulled out of other scrap photocopiers. Um, double siding, uh, duplexer, as you'd call it. A3, still plenty of that. Still plenty of A4. And that wearing sound is the paper elevator raising the tray so that the feed rollers can grab it. Too much weight in there for a spring-loaded tray, so they're all motorised. Let's try an A3. It does have a print server in it, which is another advantage, but don't really need it. Yeah, see, it's on both sides. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. So anyway, that's probably the last run this one we'll see. I'm going to get the document feeder off, get these drawers out, empty the paper out, probably top that one there up. And, uh, yeah, start breaking it down, pull all the drawers out, pull all the internal units out. Uh, pull all this off. Take all the plastic sidings off. I think that one's still half off from a repair job I did on it. I remember having all this apart, trying to fix these bloody rollers and optocouple sensors or whatever they are. Yeah, they only just put that back together like that. Anyway. But as you can see, it's all metal frame underneath. There's no plastic past the outer skin as such. Unless there's a key paper transfer area like that. Yeah, the display on these is all monochrome, as you can see. Uh, there's another one here. That's an old one. It's been sitting around. I think I've got another two. So there's no internal drivers or anything. These ones have a part number, though. Made by Sharp. So... These will be up for grabs, the control, even the whole control panel if someone wants it. Uh, the LCDs, again, I've, thro I've probably thrown about 20 or 30 of these out from all the machines that I've scrapped. Again, all the similar models, all Minolta. They all came from a Minolta service rep. But you can only have so many of the one thing. Yeah, it won't let me reset. Because I buggered it up. There we go. But plenty of good features on these machines. Um, I've been into service mode and tried playing with the toning, toner feed settings and things like that, and it still won't do it. Which one was it? Stop zero zero, stop zero one, or something. That might have been for a different model of the machine. I can't remember now. And this will scan to network, I think, as well. They're basically a digital um, scanner on a uh, big laser printer. That's essentially all a digital copier is. It's a glorified flatbed scanner permanently attached to a uh, laser printer. And yes, it does have a, I think they're usually an 8 or a 10 gigabyte SCSI hard drive in them. Yeah, also got print server. Oh no, this isn't the print server. This is the main, I think the main digital board and image processing from a... Uh, DI 620, uh, that's going to go, and that's a PI 6000 print server from a DI 620, 650 model uh, copier. Again, there's not really much use for it, so we'll autopsy that one, and then just other random junk I'm going to throw out. This was Brad's old graphics card, but and he butchered it for water cooling, but unfortunately, it's uh, died like. It's like it's just losing steam. It literally just slowed down, 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 and eventually crashed and wouldn't boot up in anything more than four or six colours. So it's a bit dead. Well, not so dead, but not so operational. It's a 7800 GT dual 512 meg. Half decent card. Uh, I've already 
commandeered the power pa power pack for it as well. So that's not it. That's it there. You can internally power them, but this one had a uh, external 12 volt power brick as well. You could run it off a mains plug if your power supply wasn't big enough. But yeah, that can pretty much go. Uh, unless somebody wants it, but I doubt it. I'll leave it out. I know someone's going to say they want it. That could be probably, probably be one of the next giveaways. I mean, I've run it and it was it was just crashing. It wasn't doing shit. So if someone wants to try a hot air reflow or something on it, try and reflow one of these BGA chips or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Get it out of me sight. Same with all this other rubbish. It can go. It's not worth hanging on to. Obsolete now. Likewise, this laptop crap. There's a spare battery for my old Toshiba. Docking stations. Uh, there's another ThinkPad, Centrino, uh, whatever it is, processor. My old gaming PC, which is the uh, Athlon 64 bit. And that should be the Pentium Pro. That's something I haven't touched in a long time. Yeah, it is, because it's got a uh, Bigfoot drive in it. So that's something we can revisit later as well, once I get everything sorted in here. There's a lot to do. Ah, look, there's more stuff up here. There's another LCD with a touch panel. I don't have the um, CCFL driver for that one. That one there has its little driver on it. No, it's actually a whole control panel from a Minolta uh, DI240 or something like that. That one there... Yeah, it's got the touch panel on it, a few little scratches. That's an Epson uh, ECM A0734. Hmm, can't remember what that came off. I've got a feeling it's off a um, Canon CLC900. Pretty sure that's what that came off. Yeah, CLC900 or some kind of old Xerox. That's a laser for, I think, for the DI450. That's a laser for a DI620. Now I had quite a few of these a while ago, but ended up ended up stripping them just for the lasers because nobody wanted to pay the shipping on such a big heavy lump. But we'll see what I can do with that later. Old tone is another crap. So there's a bit in here. Not as much as people were expecting to see, I know that much. People were expecting my house to be full of junk like the shed is, but no, it's not. It does need a good dust and clean, which is why I'm doing this. Uh, stuff has been sitting around too long, so I'm going to get the good vacuum cleaner out and everything and wash all the walls down, turn this into a decent bedroom and work on renovating my current bedroom, which is an absolute mess at the moment because there's damp in that back end corner of the house. So there's mould on the window frames and now on the walls starting to form and that does become a health hazard. So yeah, if you live in a room with mouldy walls and things and have breathing problems, that is why. I don't have breathing problems yet, and I'm not allowing it to happen. Oh, I guess I better turn this one off. Or whatever it's doing. Like the little whistle that reflector motor makes in the uh, laser assembly. Extremely high speed. Just hear it winding down. <laughs> They're fascinating, I'll give them that much. It's a shame they just weigh so much. I don't know how much this thing weighs, but it's got to be at least 200 kilos. It's a bit, it's about 400 pounds.